Hey, Planeswalkers, Mithras here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. Today, I got a fun top deck for you. We're going to walk through the main board. We'll talk about the sideboard. We'll pull those two together for our best of three and how to sideboard. And then we'll go play some competitive magic here today in both best of one with the deck and best of three. So today's top deck, before we get there, I just want to say thank you. As always, I appreciate your support. You can feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there. Additionally, like the video if you like it. You can like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Stay up to date on daily content like this. Additionally, you can follow my untapped profile down below. I am very, very close to Mythic. Um, and then additionally, uh, feel free to share your journey with me. I've included the companion app down there as well. And lastly, feel free to support the channel by uh, becoming something like a patron currently running a event for uh, the launch of that. And then additionally, feel free to hop in the Discord as well. So lots of cool people in there hanging out. So thank you guys. Now, quickly here, what deck are we playing? Well, Planeswalkers, this top deck for us uh, is a Selesnya Landfall deck. So this particular version of the deck runs about, I want to say, 55%-ish, uh, give or take. Um, so this is what we're going to run today uh, in both in both best of one and best of three. So first off, as always, the deck list is available for you down below in the description, so you have access to it right away. Um, and then additionally, uh, the deck link is down there as well. So Planeswalkers, for those of you that are new, here uh, Slesnia is the uh, white and green color schema from uh, Ravnica that gives us both the uh, obviously plains and uh, forests. And then additionally, it is a landfall deck because it all revolves around these kinds of things. So interactions with landfall. Landfall is an ability that triggers when a land enters the battlefield. So in the case of Kazandu Mammoth here, um, which is also a modal land, uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, we, uh, Mammoth gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So I'm very excited about this one. We haven't done a landfall kind of specific deck for a while since Gruul. Um, nice to do something a little bit different here. Uh, we got some control takes, but the objective really of this deck is leveraging the landfall to help you get and pump your creatures. And then additionally has a go wide strategy um, that we'll talk about in a little bit here with some token generation uh, and things like that as well. Um, so really what I would say, kind of a mid-range uh, to late game deck, really creature focused and kind of token focused uh, as well um, with that flavor of the landfall, of course. So Planeswalkers, uh, as always, I'll do my flyby here so you guys can take a look at everything in the deck. So as we discuss each of these cards individually, um, you can get an understanding for the deck in its totality. I'm pretty excited about this one. It's got a lot of different concepts and unique things within the landfall um, that I'm pretty excited about. We are running 26 lands as well, so you guys know that I think that's quite a bit, at least for best of one. Um, as well, actually, it's fairly aggressive in terms of best of three, but again, a lot of thinning happening here with the Evolving Wilds and Fabled Passage. Um, so first off, we have Glass Casket, so this is a perfect kind of control card. Um, we don't really kick off this deck until our two drops, um, so it, it's going to be a little bit slow, so we have to make sure it's impactful, but we do have some ramp in there. Um, but Glass Casket here. Um, enters the battlefield, we exile target creature with convert mana cost three or less until glass casket leaves. Um, we also have Lotus Cobra, so again, our second two drop here, we got a creature snake. This landfall trigger ability when it enters the battlefield under our control, we get to add one mana of any color. And then we have a, a Marasa Root Grazer. So a lot of people forget about this one, so you gotta pay attention. Um, it does quite a bit here. So it, with its Vigilance, we can put a basic land card from our hand on the battlefield when we tap it, and we can return a basic land uh, we control to its owner's hand. So lots of power there in terms of the give or take with optimizing some land drops, which is kind of interesting, so I'm pretty excited about this. Um, lots of cool things that we can do with this. Then we have Skyclave Apparition. Again, you guys know that this is one of my favorite cards from Zenikar's Rising. Uh, again, a core spirit creature here. And we can, when it enters, we can exile uh, target non-land, non-token permanent um, with convert mana cost for less. And then when Skyclave leaves, um, our opponents will get an XX blue illusion creature token where X is the converted mana cost of the exiled card. Good news is that card's not coming back. Um, so it's a nice trade. Then we have everyone's favorite Scoot Swarm. So I've been making more of this, more of the 
good old Scoots um, and some of the other decks here. Um, but Scoot Swarm uh, is a creature insect. It has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, we get to create a 1-1 one, one green uh, insect creature token. And then if we have six or more lands, we get to create a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm instead. So boom, 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 boom. Multiply, multiply, multiply. So we'll see if we can get that off today. Um, I've had one or two matches where we've gotten quite a bit, but never been able to close with it. Um, so maybe today's the day. Then we got Kazandu Mammoth. Like I said, we talked about this one already as a modal land. can come and tapped as well. Now, we also have Felidar Retreat. So I really like this when you combo it with Scoot and you combo it um, with a few other things here. Um, it's going to do a lot more. So we get the... with Landfall here with this enchantment, we can either create a 2-2 two -two, uh, Cat Beast creature token or we can add a plus one, plus one counter on each creature uh, we control, and those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. So very, very powerful here. Um, and this is gonna be a nice closer for us. Then we have Migratory Greathorn. So this is a creature um, that also has mutate, and then when it, and when it mutates, we get to search our library for a land, put that land onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle our library. Um, so very powerful, again, within the landfall mechanic. And then we got this guy here too, Yasharn Implacable Earth. So Yasharn's awesome um, in this in this particular archetype. Um, we don't see Yasharn too much uh, in in the current standard meta, but let me know if this guy still matters. Um, definitely seen a lot in in um, in historic for sure. So you should be aware of how this guy operates. Um, now, when Yasharn enters the battlefield, we get to search our land or our library for a basic forest card and a basic plains. Reveal those cards and put them into our hand, then shuffle our library. So we get to thin for two, which is important. We get a 4-4 four, four body. And then additionally, players can't pay life or sacrifice non-land permanents uh, to cast spells or activated abilities. So pretty powerful here. We'll see it lock out a few things. Um, it was a little bit more powerful, I'd say, uh, before the great rotation kind of a thing, particularly against the sacrifice decks, and that is where and why it is ran, particularly in Historic, but still has good application here um, in in current standards. So, for instance, you know, the Rogue, that's a flyer that they sack all the time. They're not going to be able to sack that um, for, for an idea of how that's going to work. Um, then we have, at the very top end, we have Vivian Monsters Advocate. I love this card. We get the uh, play off the top of our deck. We may cast creature cards from the top of our library, like I said, and then we may look at the card on top of our library. And then we can also create a 3-3 green beast creature token. Put your uh, choice of vigilance counter on, on it, a reach counter or a trample counter uh, for the plus one, and then minus two. Uh, whenever we cast our next creature spells turn, we may search our library for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost, put that on the battlefield and then shuffle library. So that pairs really well with dropping uh, Yasharn or Migratory Great Horn as a one-off to go pull something like a Skew. Um, or if you need an answer, Skyclave as well. So keep those things in mind. Um, and then additionally, we got our nice modals here. So first off, we got Emiria, Shattered Skyclave, and Call. Um, so again, kind of the, my pain land joke, but um, we can enter for and pay three life, uh, and it comes in uh, untapped, or we can have it come in tapped. Uh, for planes, and then additionally, Miri's Call here is a nice kind of finisher card. It's in a lot of control decks now. Um, you can create two 4-4 uh, four, four white angel warrior creature tokens uh, with flying, and then non-angel creatures we control gain indestructible till end of turn. So another nice finisher. And then we have Turpentine, uh, uh, Turn Timber Serpentine Wood, say that 20 times fast, um, and Turn Timber uh, Symbiosis. So here, similar deal, uh, but with a forest, enters tapped, or we can pay three to have it untapped. Um, or we can also look at the top seven cards of our library. We can find a creature um, from among them. If it's convert mana cost is three or less, it enters with three additional plus one, plus one counters. And then we can put the rest in the bottom of the library in any order. So that sums up the main board. We kind of went over the sideboard quickly, but the key is, again, mainly the pathways here for the modal lands, and then additionally uh, thinners uh, and triggers on landfall with both Evolving Wilds and Fabled Passage. Um, some things that you could consider in this deck, um, you could consider running a Great Henge as well. Um, so that could be uh, something that you may want to do. But overall, again, this is the archetype. This is, this is really the deck list 
um, for the Celestia landfill. And then Planeswalkers, if you do got questions or comments I should have mentioned, please let me know down below. Uh, always happy to uh, ask uh, or hear, hear your questions. Um, so let's go ahead into the sideboard. Um, first off here, we have Giant Killer. So this is gonna destroy target creature with power four or greater. We can tap down. Where would I play this? Um, I would play this against any bigger creature decks, any mid-range type decks. Um, so where this runs well is against Gruul. It's gonna work against um, sometimes Mono Red. Um, additionally, not only for taking things like Annex out um, or anything that's got the cleave on it, um, but it's also gonna be able to give you some control with that tap down power there. Um, other spots that you may want to play it is if they're still running uh, Nighthawk and Rogues could be one for instance, um, but a little bit of a case-by-case -case basis. This also takes out and works well against Mono White uh, as the creatures get bigger, obviously. Um, this is a good one there for you too. Um, then we have Chain Web Arachner, and also, sorry, any of the Winata decks, so many decks, you guys. Um, then we have Chain Web Arachner here. This works great against Rogues, um, and for the reason that it's got an escape. So here, this creature's got Reach. Um, it also has that escape that I mentioned for five uh, forests, or, or two forests and three other uh, colorless, um, and then exile four other cards for your graveyard, and then this enters with uh, three plus one plus one counters on it, but the big piece about this is when it does enter the battlefield, it deals damage uh, equal to its power to target creature with flying and opponent controls. Um, so again, Rogues is the big one there. You could obviously play this uh, to help you against your rain decks if you needed to. Other flyer decks, um, Mono White might be something um, for the Angels. Um, also for the Skyclave um, artifact as well. So lots of good spots uh, that you could you could run this. Then we got Soul Guide Lantern. So Soul Guide Lantern enters the battlefield, exile target card from a graveyard. So that could be your graveyard, but then um, when you sack it, um, you're gonna uh, sacrifice sacrifice this and exile uh, your opponent's graveyard. So keep that in mind. Then you can always sack it and then draw a card for one. Um, where would you play this? You're gonna play this against Lotus decks. You're gonna play this against uh, Cycle decks. Definitely, definitely still around. Um, so keep an eye out for those. Um, you're gonna play this against mid range decks. You can play this against uh, Rogue decks as well uh, to keep to keep everything out of there. You could play this against Mono Black. You could play this against Mono White. Um, enchantment type decks. Anything that's running Lurus, like I mentioned, uh, those are some good ones for you. Then we got Glass Casket again. Um, so I talked about this briefly, but again, big ones here are going to be aggro decks, mono red. I'd run against Boros Knights. I'd run against Boros Winata. I'd run it against uh, <laughs> Boros Warriors, which is very popular as well. Um, you guys can check those check those videos out, obviously. Um, but this is important. Um, it's important against sometimes adventure decks. It's important against Gruul, aggro, those kinds of things. Then we have Gem Razor. So Gem Razor here. Um, it's got reach, it's got trample, it's got nice mutate, and whenever this creature mutates, destroy target artifact, enchantment, and opponent controls. Um, I would actually play this against mono white. Uh, you know, the mono white version that I play is pretty locked down. Any auras decks, I've seen uh, a comeback in mono white auras as well, so keep that in mind. Um, and then additionally, obviously late game, any of the Yorian decks that are running Doom, um, those kinds of things, this can be an important card for you um, to really take things out. Then we got more Vivians. Uh, where would I play this? I play this against any of the control decks. I play this against any late game deck. Um, I, I like it also against the Dimmer Yorian decks um, that, that are running Doom just to get stuff on the board and kind of help you out there. Um, it's good against Rogues too. Uh, if you do get to five, you can keep making the three threes with Reach. You're gonna be fine there too. Um, so those are some good considerations. And then last but not least, we have Realm Cloaked Giant. So this is kind of like your nuclear option, if you ask me, um, because it destroys all non-giant creatures. If you guys notice, we don't have any non-giant creatures, but this also gives you a massive body at a 7-7 Vigilancer. Um, so it could be a consideration against aggro decks, um, just to kind of give you some board board wipe and saving um, if you need it. Uh, it's not a bad late game card either. Um, in case you need to kind of try and regain control of the board, it's good in the mirror match. If you're getting out flooded, you might as well wipe it and reset, um, those kinds of things. So lots of good spots for this one as well. Fairly interesting card uh, and a really fun card nonetheless. 
Um, so Planeswalkers, that was the main board, that was the sideboard. Let's talk about how we bring these two together uh, in terms of an aggro mid-range and a late game kind of plan. So in terms of aggro, um, unless it's rogues, you know, we talked about the Chainweb, Rackner. Um, I would actually probably go Glass uh, glass Casket. Gem Razor isn't bad against rogues either. Um, that could be a good consideration. Giant Killer could be a good consideration. Vivian could be a good consideration. Um, so let's call it like five. Um, so what would I move out? Well, we're going to keep these glass caskets. We want the ramp. We want the root grazer. Um, you're probably going to want Skyclave Apparition still. Um, Scute's not terrible uh, to keep in. Um, I would actually maybe cut Kazandu Mammoth, to be honest. We've got so many lands. Um, even though it is a landfall trigger deck, um, I would maybe go two there. The other consideration um, might even be Yasharn at the higher end. Um, for three, that could give you five. Um, and then the other thing is you could always thin out some lands because there is quite a bit. And we still have the Emiria's Call and the Turn Timber Symbiosis as well. So you could go a little bit more aggressive um, on that space by cutting Planes or Forest. So we're going to be pretty healthy there um, in that space. And that would also give you a way to preserve Kazanu Mammoth. And then you kind of don't have to worry about the flooding aspect because you do got a lot of uh, other lands baked in with the modals. So those are some considerations there. Then we move into mid-range. Um, what I would kind of consider, uh, again, depending on what you're playing, if it's mainly going to be kind of that graveyard hate that you may need, uh, Soul Guide Lantern might generally be an answer. Glass Casket still could be an answer. Gem Razor could be an answer. Um, Vivian, we got a lot of different things here. Um, so these are going to be like the Rakdos mid-range decks. It could be Selesnya's uh, Adventures. Um, it could be... You know more of like a boros warriors deck at times it can act like a mid-range depending on what you're playing so you know big range of things that you can hit there in that spot um you know we've done the soul time mid-range as well um i consider my model white uh, life gain deck mid-range um so i'm gonna call it to be safe like f let's go five to seven here again um, I would consider, we're going to keep Glass Casket, um, you know, if we're considering keeping Glass Casket here. Um, so I would keep this intact. I would potentially keep Skyclave here too, as long as, if they aren't running creatures though, then these, these five are gone and that's a super easy one to, to play with. Everything else stays intact. Um, if they are running creatures and they got enough of them, you're going to keep these. Uh, cut the lands, uh, maybe go down two or three to four there. Um, and then what you can do is uh, where I would look to again is potentially Yasharn, uh, depending on what kind of deck you're playing. So that will get you through the mid range. And then when we talk about the late game, these are generally Doom decks or Yorian type decks. Um, Gem Razor is probably going to be a choice. Glass Castle probably won't be. Um, you may consider a Giant Killer. Um, Vivian might be, and then similar to the Round Cloak Giant. So let's go like six here. Um, you're going to dump Glass Casket. Um, I like keeping Skyclave if they're running enchantments. If they aren't, then Skyclave is gone. Um, so that's that's where you could remove. And then additionally from some of the land space. So that's a good 5 to 7 there, um, depending on how many lands you want to cut, if you want to continue to, to run these. Um, and you can be fairly aggressive on the pinging yourself here. Um, with that, uh, if you're not if you're not playing real aggressive decks too, so you can keep that in mind. Um, so planeswalkers, we walk through the aggro approach, we walk through the mid range range approach, approach, we walk through the late game approach. Um, if you got questions or comments, let me know down below. Happy to help uh, as always. And so this is what we have today: a Selesnya landfall deck. Um, and as I mentioned, I think it runs around fifty-five percent. Uh, win rate, um, and this is generally from Platinum uh, Plus, uh, so pretty, pretty good. Um, so let's go ahead and take a shot at it today with this deck. Um, we're going to go into our standard ranked here. We'll grab the Slesnia Landfall deck, and we will be off to the races. Now, as we sit here, as my queue's been, oh, it was pretty quick, um, had been fairly long today, um, and I somehow not made a lot of progress so hopefully we can do it today um, by playing playing this deck um, but with that said planeswalkers i just want to say thank you um, i really appreciate your support please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there additionally like the video if you like it you can like me on facebook and follow me on twitter or twitch stay up to date on content like this i will keep this because we got a lot of different interactions um, 
I, I appreciate that support, as I mentioned, um, and I'm very thankful for it. So, uh, also, other ways to support the channel down below in the description, as I mentioned, by becoming things like a patron uh, as well, and you can hop in the Discord. So here's a interesting choice that we will have to make. Um, I think we remove Luminarch for the moment. And we play my favorite mono white deck, you guys. Um, hmm. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. So, what we need, I can't pay the three. Um, I'm gonna need to do this. Play the Troon Timber. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, no blocks. So a little slow. Um, they obviously had enough. But I want to I want to play this out so you guys can see it. Um, they obviously, like I said, had enough. And this is how you, oop. This is how you do this at instant speed. But we don't have enough to hit the luminarch. So, a little slow against the Mono White deck. Um, I've played this guy actually a few times today uh, in mirror matches. So, how it goes. Uh, we'll go to our next best of one. So, a little slow here off the bat, um, but we'll see where we go. Alright, into the next match. Literally, it's been Mono White, it's been Rogues, and that is all we've been playing here. Uh, in, in the top end of Diamond right now. All right. Oh, Lexa Bitezer. Bitezer. Um, I've played this one too already today. Um, so let's see how this goes. This is a bad, bad start for us. Um, absolutely. We're going to go ahead and mulligan here. This is a little bit better. Uh, we'll keep this. I'm going to dump the Sharn and we'll go from there. And they are running a rogue stack, um, and I know this because I've already played them a few times. So unfortunately, I got to do this first. We're gonna go grab our planes. So this is helpful. So could have slow played this. So we'll see what happens here. Um, they're going to get a lot of damage in relatively quickly. Yeah, they got that in too.
So as long as I'm just gonna say as long as they don't have uh, that flyer and we can get something on the board, we might have a chance here. But this deck is definitely a little slow, so hopefully uh, the best of three matches will go slightly differently. Um, I guess we will find out. Huh? Gotta go this. Uh, we're gonna be slow there. We have to do something like this. Ooh. And that is good game, my friends. So, very fast matches. Unfortunately, the deck is not the right deck for best of one, particularly in diamonds, but wanted to give you guys a show of uh, this one. So, let's go into best of three and see how that goes. Um, hopefully, it should perform a little bit better because the traditional center rank, there's abs and doom deck that we did yesterday, which was a clean sweep. Um, so, you guys should absolutely check that out. So, here we go into our best of three and then as always planeswalkers again appreciate your support i really do uh, please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there additionally like the video if you like it you can like me on facebook and follow me on twitter and twitch to stay up to date on content like this and daily videos and then feel free to support the channel other ways by hopping in the discord um, hanging out or becoming a patron so thank you uh we'll play first i will keep this because we got the ramp with cobra here And looks like we got very lucky and hit another rogues deck. So we'll see how this goes. Just very much might not be the day. Alright, so we got a mill deck. So we'll see, because we don't particularly have anything that, at least in our main board, that's going to help us. So when we get to the sideboard, we do have some things with escape um, that we'll be able to leverage. There's our Yasharn. Um, I am going to grab a forest and my planes. Get my thinning. And we'll swing with the Cobra. <laughs> Alright. Let's see if we can get away with this. They're going to get everything in that they can, as fast as they can. So good news is we still have a second Yasharn. We haven't hit any of our triggers that we need. They're getting all their triggers. Might be a very fast day. So we'll see if we get this on the board though. We still gotta get it on the board. Alright, here we go.
them on the thinning just a little bit. <laughs> so something to keep in mind right there is to be cognizant of how you thin your deck too. But um, knowing that we got all this stuff going on, it's going to be pretty fast anyway here. So depending on what they play, we could be close. Um, because Kazanu will go to seven. We got two with Lotus. Uh, we got three with the Skute. And four with Yasharn. So that's going to be six, seven, nine. It's going to be close. So we probably really need like two turns. Um, unless we can hit something that's going to help us here. That's what they're doing, they're counting too. So we got the double fabled. Hopefully um, we can make this work. We'll check. We'll see how many lands we got with the first one. Uh-oh, there went one. We got 15. Oh boy, it's going to be close. Here come the rogues. Here we go. Let's get that one off the board. We got 10. Let's do this. Nothing we could do there. They had two blockers. So as long as they don't have Agadims to pull back. If they do have Agadims, we're okay. We'll have to see. There's the Agadims. Ooh, but if they got a double land, we're in trouble. Yep. Got it. Oh, so nice. Okay. So, how are we going to board? Because it's going to matter. Um, so, we don't need Giant Killer. We need the double glass caskets. We need the chain web. Um, right now, we don't need Gem Razor. The only thing with Gem Razor, though, is it will make our guys a little bit bigger. And it's got Trample. So that could be a consideration. Additionally, it gives us reach. Um, we still get Vivian's. I don't mind playing Vivian's. I don't mind playing Soul Guide here. Um, we got absolutely smoked on the lands. We got 26. I'm gonna get a little bit more aggressive uh, because you guys know that's just how I am. So let's do that. So that gives us 65. Um, I'm going to keep this. Lotus Cobra is not the best. 
Uh, we can get there fast, but it doesn't like help us a ton. Um, and then I like Scutes. I like Kazandu. And we need one more. So let's say post that 22 lands. We got three there. We can get a little bit more aggressive. We still get our thinning here. Yasharn. I'm going to drop one Yasharn. So let's try this. Um, I'm okay with this for now. If we need to change it up in the next match, we can do that. I don't mind having Lotus Cobra for the ramp. Um, I just got to think about it a little bit in, in terms of how we want to do that or what I would take off. Ooh, maybe we go... I do like Flodars, though. Maybe we do two of these. There we go. We'll split the difference there. Because I like that instant pop, like you guys saw, back and forth. Um, but we'll see. We'll see here. We get a second chance to kind of retweak that. Uh, this isn't the best it's going to work but we got both our chain webs um, right off the bat which is kind of a bummer and what's even more of a bummer is they hit I'm the thin Here we go. Now, if we can get a land, if we can land a land, um, one, and if we can get Vivian on, we'll be in a good spot. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it though, because I got the two open. Um, that, and we don't have, we don't have a land. Um, we could play Kazandu. We're going to cancel that. Actually, we're going to try this first. but we're still going to play it. Because we need to get... We needed to get that off the board. And I'm okay with taking damage here. So Vivian is good. I'd like you to meet my friend, Stompy. Now we haven't hit, uh, Anything that we can use at the moment. So the chain webs are still hurting us. Um, we'll double cast those next turn.
I'm gonna block the thief. We're gonna give him the mill. So we don't have a choice. I'll go here. I will not be quelled. We have him at 26. Okay. So this is super powerful for us. And then we get the double up here. And reach. There we go. Beauty lies <laughs> So now we're trading against the lamb chop. Ooh, I like it. It's intense, intense, intense. Best of three. Oh, thank you. Don't worry. I hold grudges. <laughs> Because we got another one! Oh, yes! Now I can keep, I can hold Vivian here um, and bring Chainweb back. They can hit one if they have their little uh, fancy pants fling the dust. Oh, there we go. So we got a few things here that we're going to do. We're going to go bye-bye, 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 bye-bye. Now we're going to start chipping the damage. And what do they have in their graveyard? They got nine, so they can hit and cling the dust. All right, they reloaded. Now, at this point, at this point, I'm going to want to play Vivian. Um, and I'm going to want to do that for a couple of different reasons here. So they may have, let's pull this stuff back from the graveyard here, um, which could hurt us. We'll find out pretty soon. Oh, I can live with that. That's fine. Keep chain web in our back pocket for now. That works. We'll just keep making some guys then. So now we'll go. We will adapt to any threat. Here 
here we go. So I'm going to save that because I want the double up on the next one here. So if we can make it one more turn, we may have a chance here. We will see. Against Lamb Chop. Oh, bye bye Fabled Passage. You were so nice. I'll take the Evolving Wilds though. There we go. So we're we at 11. I gotta be careful though. Because if I get too close here, they're gonna they're gonna be able to mow me out. So here's how we're gonna do this. Um, we're going to swing in, we're going to check how many blockers, we're going to do the math after they block. Because um, they, they're going to gain three off this. Nope, they won't because they don't have enough. So let's swing in and we'll go from there. Because again, if we thin with Fabled and we thin with Evolving, we're going to lose two cards. So we just got to be careful of that here. And we have a plus two on three, guys. So between our three lowest ones, uh, that's four, four, five, which is 13 life. So as long as they don't have another blocker, um, we should be okay. And Lamb Chop could be roping us at the moment, so we'll see. But with that said, if we take this down, we turned it around in our best of three, which is great. Um, and that's actually what I was expecting with this deck. Whew. So, and we beat a rogues deck, which is very important. Always, always important. Because <laughs> I, I get many comments from many of you about uh, the rogues decks here. And it does look like we are being roped by Lamb Chop. So, that is good. I hope you guys are having a good day. I certainly am finishing out this way, beating a rogues deck. I can't, can't complain too much. Lamb Chop, thank you for letting me catch this on video um, so that we all know that you are a nice little roper here. Um, and obviously, your internet got disconnected or you're walking away to do something else. Um, I understand. You know, I'm not going to be upset because you're telling me that I won the match and then I just got to be a patient human being so I can't complain about that lamb chop now planeswalkers while we're waiting for them to make their final statement here by continuing to run the clock um, I just want to say thank you as always I appreciate your support um, please feel free to subscribe to the channel Oh, we didn't even have enough. We didn't have enough. Ooh. Oh, we didn't have enough. That could have been a different story. Um, but we are back and in business. Back to Diamond Tier 3 here, my friends. Um, so that's a bummer if it didn't give me the one little extra. So that is something that can be painful, it looks like, but let's go check it out. Finishing out today. 
Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, back to the deck here, Planeswalkers, as always. So again, this is a Selesnya Landfall deck. Um, as you can see, super fun when you get it going. Uh, we did a good job uh, in our best of three matches. Cyborg and Helt. Um, and oddly enough, the doubling of the spiders in our main hand really helped us. That actually saved the game for us. Um, so here's what we got going on again. Uh, deck list is available for you down below in the description, so you have access to it right away. If you got questions or comments, let me know. Um, as you can see, rogues is overcome. You can overcome rogues here with this deck. Um, additionally, sideboard uh, once again, uh, and then planeswalkers. Like I was saying, appreciate your support. Uh, please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there. Like the video if you like it. You can like me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Stay up to date on daily content like this. And additionally, Planeswalkers, please feel free to support the channel in other ways. Uh, information below in, in the uh, description. Please feel free to become a patron. Always appreciate that. Um, love that added uh, interaction as well, as, as well as Discord. And that information for the server is down there too. All right, Planeswalkers, we did it with the Selesnya uh, Landfall deck. Pretty happy about it. Uh, as I said, we, we, split the, we split the pot today. So not, not a hot showing in best of one. Great showing in best of three. Um, turn that around, and that's what I like to see. So, all right, you stay safe, Planeswalkers. I'll see you again soon. Mithras out. And until next time, Planeswalkers, you stay tuned. <laughs>